Over the course of the week, we have been studying phonemes and allophones. So phonemes are mental representations of the sounds of a language. And the allophones are the physical manifestations of those sounds. However, we still haven't figured out the process to go from one to the other. Like you have the phonemes, but then how do you decide which is the right allophone for whatever word you're going to say? This is where phonological rules come in. This is an example from earlier in the week. So we had some data from Korean and we knew that Korean has two sounds, S and S. And that in some words, we see only the S, as in Saram, Set, Sugun, Wisung. And there are other words where we see the S, Shigan, Shihum, Shinmun, for example. But we only see the S whenever it is followed by the sound E. And we only see the S whenever it is not followed by the sound E. So how can we explain this pattern and how can we explain this as simply and as parsimoniously as possible? We could set up a phonological rule. This is an example. So this says that there's a phoneme S and there's an environment. This line here is where the phoneme goes. So there's an environment such that you can find an S and then and the sound E. So it would be something like C. And if you ever find that, this would trigger the rule and would transform the S into the allophone S. So this rule would predict that there is a kind of underlying form, an underlying representation of this word, shigan, which actually looks like this, sigan. The S would be the base form of the phoneme, and then this base form would be transformed into an esh. Why would it be transformed? Because the rule would look at this word, and it would detect that there's an S followed by, an, by the sound E. S, E. And this would trigger the rule which transforms the S into the allophone esh. So the input is sigan, the rule uh, uh, transforms the S into an S, and then you get the output shigan, time or hour. So this would be an underlying representation of the word, and you would get a surface form after the application of the rule. So this is one way to explain what's happening. There's a second way. Maybe the, basic, the base form is S, and so the S is transformed into an S, Whenever you see the esh followed by an a, an e, an u, or an a. If this was the rule, then we would predict that the underlying representation of word number four actually looks like this, shum. And then this word would have an environment that triggers the rule. So we have the esh followed by the vowel a. Uh. This would trigger the transformation of S into S, and then it would go from the underlying representation shum to the surface form sum island, which is what we actually observe. So those are the two ways that we could explain what we see in the data. We have a rule that takes an S and transforms it into an S, or vice versa. Which of these two looks easier? probably the one that has fewer environments, that has fewer conditioning environments. So this one has only one, whereas this rule has one, two, three, four things to explain how it works. So we're going to prefer the simpler rule. And we're going to say that the phoneme S is transformed into an S, the allophone S. That this is the basic, the, I'm sorry, the base form, and it's transformed into the allophone S whenever you have the S underlyingly and then an E. So if we propose the rule like this, again, we have a base form for the phoneme, an allophone that is conditioned on an environment so that the S followed by an E is transformed into Shi, as in Shigan. So the underlying Shigan would be transformed into Shigan. 
and we would assume that there are underlying representations of the words that then undergo the rule and emerge as the surface form. Sigan un, uh, goes into the rule, the S is transformed into an S, and then it comes out as Shigan. That's what the phonological rule is trying to explain. Let's look at another example, an example from Spanish. So Spanish has the sounds D, the stop, and F, which is the interdental voiced uh, fricative. So for example, we have words like drama, dolor, dime, anda, sueldo, durash, which have the, the D stop, as you can see. But there's also words like ca, lao, olio, del, comida, caduco, which only have this sound here, which I pronounce as an approximant, but in other dialects it would be pronounced as a fricative. <laughs> uh, this is a broader transcription. So we have this data from Spanish. And uh, spoiler alert, they're part of the same phoneme. But which phoneme? That's what we need to decide. So the first thing I want you to do is to get a piece of paper and try to figure out the environments for the stop and for the fricative. So as you can see, the stop occurs in the first word where it is preceded by the edge of the word and followed by the simple tap ra. The fricative, on the other hand, uh, can be observed in example number seven, where it is preceded by a and followed by a in ga. So please take a moment to go through the data and then uh, extract all of these environments. Please pause the video. Welcome back. So you should have something like this. Um, number 10 had both sounds. So it had the stop at the beginning of the word and then the fricative in the middle of the word. So you can see it on both sides. So are these two in complementary distribution? The answer is yes, because look at how different they are on what they have on the left. So on the right, we have a bunch of vowels for both of them. So they're the same vowels. That's probably not the difference between these two. However, on the left, the stop is only uh, preceded by the edge of a word or an N or an L. However, the F is only preceded by vowels, A, E, E, and O. So we do have a complementary distribution. This one appears in a bunch of environments on the left that this one does not and vice versa. So the mystery question is, which of the two should we choose as the base for the phoneme? We have two options. We could have the D as the base and then transform the D into an F whenever we see a vowel and a D. So this would suppose that we have an underlying representation uh, for number seven. Uh, the underlying representation will be kada, and it is transformed into kala. And it is transformed because we have a vowel and a D. This triggers the rule and transforms the D into an F. On the other hand, we could also explain this phenomenon by having the F as the base. And then we transform the F, the fricative, into the stop whenever uh, the fricative is preceded by edge of word or an N or an L. So we'd have the underlying representation, the me, and this environment, the edge of the word and the F, would trigger the rule and transform the D into, I'm sorry, the F into a hard D, D me. This would be the surface form. Which of these two looks easier? Probably the one on the left, the one with the fewer uh, elements to the rule, with the fewer environments. So we're going to choose the first rule, the one that has the heart stop, the D as the base, and transforms it into the fricative whenever you have the vowel and the phoneme. And we would have the underlying representations, drama, sueldo, 
but also cada lado odio with hard d's and then these are transformed into f's whenever you have a vowel and the phoneme d and that's what explained the appearance of these forms in our data set so to summarize what we have spanish would have the phoneme d which has two allophones the stop d and the fricative f we have a rule that transforms the d into an f whenever there's a vowel and the phoneme d so that the word a word like cada which has this underlying representation would have an environment that would trigger the rule this is a vowel and a d this triggers the rule and transforms the d into an f and we get the surface form ga this is the summary of what would be happening with this spanish word in summary we can explain alternations by proposing phonological rules we choose a base form and then we try to figure out how that base form is transformed into the other allophones that we see and each allophone would have its own particular environment and this is how we could explain the patterns in data